Hello, I'm Molly Hughes in the Denver Post Newsroom with today's DPTV newsmaker. Her name is Sister Rosemary Narumba. She was named one of Time Magazine's top 100 most influential people in 2014 for the work she does helping to rebuild the hearts and minds of thousands of women and children whose lives were hijacked by Ugandan warlord Joseph Kony. I had the honor of sitting down for an exclusive interview with Sister Rosemary before she spoke at the Unique Lives and Experiences lecture series. Explain the meaning behind your book, Sewing Hope. The picture behind the book itself can really explain the meaning. You see a needle and a, a piece of thread. That means we are trying to sew. We are trying to mend broken pieces. But again, it's not only that. We are trying to give a different meaning to the conflict which went on for so long. That means we are trying to train our young women, our children who have grown during this conflict, who knew nothing but conflict, that life is totally different. We can actually fight back that war by using needle and sewing machines, not machine guns. What type of transformation have you seen occur right before your eyes in northern Uganda with the work you've been doing? I've seen how that war has impacted so negatively on children and women because I totally feel I am one of those lucky ones because I was able to spend some time in my family. I was able to have a moment when I could go for my own education. At least I managed to get out of that trauma and I managed to come to live a normal life. And I think many children didn't have that chance. And I've seen over time that effect is more on women because these women who were abducted were given so many roles when they were with the rebels, especially the role of first being trained as a child soldier, and then you are also used as sex slaves. And then again, you find you are a mother, a mother to the children of your captors. So I've seen with the work we have been doing, it has been a really modest attempt to rebuild the lives of these people, to show them that life is not all what has been happening to you. Life is not ending there. We can live a better life. Mm -hmm. And that's why the book so, talks about sowing hope. Mm -hmm. That means we really have to mend the broken pieces and show them that there is life after this. Much as they believe their life is ended, mm -hmm. we have to show them their life is not ended. We can always start living in hope. You mentioned that you were touched by this tragedy yourself personally. What was different about you that allowed you to get out of it? I just thought I am a bit more lucky because I was not abducted, but I've seen children abducted. These children lost all their chances of education, chances of living in a family, and I got that. And I thought, I am lucky. I must live above this, and I must do something to restore the life of these people, give them dignity, and show them a way forward that they can live in hope. You've been traveling nonstop from city to city. What is it when your energy is low that reminds you to keep on going? Where do you draw your When energy? I really get low in my energy, sometimes even physically, I just feel I'm not doing all this for myself. It is all about those who cannot speak for themselves. And I'm right now representing them. I am giving their voice out. I'm speaking for them. That's why even my book really gives a voice to the voiceless. What were you put on this earth to do? I don't know how to do anything in order to bring dignity, especially to women and children. And really, I, I can sacrifice my life to give them that dignity. What were you doing with your life as a nun before you started this Sewing Hope? I had worked in a health clinic, running an orphanage, and I was working as a surgeon assistant. And all this were at the most difficult times of the war, when there was no doctor, when hospitals were not functioning, I was able to do all this thing. And it makes me feel that the shortest time I spent in saving life was like the longest time of my life because I really did something which I was not supposed to have done, but it was all about saving lives. And so 
I realized that even the very first profession I got was something which helped me in future and has helped me up to now that I'm not delivering children, but I'm delivering people from abject poverty, psychological poverty, and also physical poverty. If people are inspired by what you're doing and they're so moved they want to help, what is the best thing they can do? You got, first of all, to show me that compassion and love. That means what I'm telling you should touch you deep from your heart. And I always tell people, do not ask me what you want to do. I want solutions. Tell me I'm ready to do this, I'm ready to do that. And of course, there are people who want to hear specific things. I struggle with the finances. And my whole problem is to mend lives. And I'm using needle and sewing machines. I must buy them. I cannot buy them without money. This is why finances remains the top of my challenges. Did the girls make the clothes you're wearing today? I, I, this I did not, they did not make, but they can make it. Yeah. I personally can make it. Anything you want to add for the people of Denver that you would like for them, a message that you would like for them to hear? I like the people of Denver really to get involved once they hear this message because a lot of people might not have heard, and I don't blame them, but from today, when they hear me speaking, I will not say everything, but from what they hear, if they do not feel part of the problem of the, of the world, I totally will blame them. I'm not going to punch them. As I said, I would punch Stephen Colbert, but I will blame them. Because honestly, now you hear it, you can get involved in any way. And I know that a lot of times you do not hear about problems of this kind. Like Northern Uganda, things happened 20 years ago, it was forgotten. That's why I keep telling the media, please bring what you hear affecting humanity to the forefront because the media is very, very powerful. So the people of Denver can hear through the media. What a remarkable woman. Sister Rosemary was the first speaker in the 2015 Unique Lives and Experiences Lecture Series, which is sponsored by the Denver Post. What an inspiring start to the season. The next speaker is Valerie Harper, talking about living fearlessly with cancer one day at a time. We'd love for you to join us for another inspiring evening. It's coming up on March 3rd at 7.30 at the Sewell Ballroom. Thanks for joining us for today's DPTV Newsmaker. I'm Molly Hughes in the Denver Post Newsroom with DPTV.